to another cross-border talk where uh, we will focus on uh, uh, a twin subject of EU reform and uh, EU enlargement in Western Balkans. Uh, we'll be speaking with Francesco Martino, who is an Italian journalist based in Sofia and an expert on Southeastern Europe. And uh, we will discuss a number of issues with him, mostly uh, the perspectives before uh, EU integration of Western Balkans, what is realistic in the context of the renewed push by European institutions for enlargement, uh, and also especially the role of Romania and Bulgaria uh, in this process, uh, given that uh, uh, currently their foreign ministers are uh, very much linked with European institutions, so maybe there is some role for them to play in uh, this renewed push. So, Francesco, first of all, let us start with maybe a large question, but uh, it's good to frame somehow what we speak about. Uh, on one hand, we have um, uh, this uh, desire for European integration of Western Balkans, which was announced by uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, and it was reconfirmed also in other, by other officials and meetings. Um, which, of course, uh, faces obstacles and uh, has not been happening for a long time, namely because it's not easy as a process. On the other hand, we have uh, the re push for redefinition of EU treaties, which uh, would, uh, they say would allow for European Union to be governed with more than 30 member states, but it also means renouncement on the right of veto for uh, countries such as Bulgaria and Romania or other let's say, weaker member of the European Union, and uh, it's interesting whether this is possible or how it would happen. So, my in this context, my question is, what is realistic on the both tracks, EU integration and EU reform? A lot of talk, but uh, what can happen in reality? Yes. Um, first of all, hello to you and to all people listening to, to our conversation. Uh, as you mentioned, um, this is a very complex um, uh, question. Uh, and of course, it's a two-track question, as you, uh, as you said. Um, honestly, for people like me following uh, Western Balkans and European uh, policies uh, related to Western Balkans since uh, quite a long time, it's a bit difficult, you know, to stay focused and stay interested in, in uh, what's going on because we are hearing about uh, relaunching uh, the perspectives, uh, EU perspectives for Western Balkans since ever, since decades. Uh, something has happened, but uh, in, the, in this last uh, 15 years, not too much, I would say. So it is very difficult to say exactly how realistic uh, uh, new uh, calls to relaunch what has been uh, practically stopped uh, with the uh, coming in of Croatia into the European Union. Uh, this is the, the, let's say, last chapter, like last real chapter of, of the story. Um, I would say that um, it is uh, uh, not that realistic to see other countries of the European, uh, of the Western Balkans, sorry, uh, becoming full members of the European Union uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, we know that uh, the countries that are placed, let's say, the best are both uh, Montenegro, first of all, and, and Serbia. All the other ones are, you know, lagging behind. But even for Montenegro and even for Serbia, uh, it's a long way to go. And I think uh, there is no political consensus in uh, letting these countries in in the foreseeable future. Uh, this, of course, uh, due to many reasons. Uh, uh, there's a you know, long process of analyzing the so-called enlargement fatigue, the fact that many countries in the European Union do not want to enlarge even more the Union before setting uh, um, mechanisms to manage uh, the countries which are already in. Uh, I have I would name France, you know, as maybe the uh, like the most recognizable uh, country in this field. Uh, on the other, on the other hand, uh, since the perspective became very foggy, uh, also countries uh, in the region in the Western Balkans uh, lost, I would say, uh, the energy to push forward uh, uh, the agenda, which is uh, 
uh, requested uh, by the European Union to, to become a, a, a member. I would say that maybe the newest uh, and most important thing which happened in this field was in 2000, uh, I mean, one year, almost two years ago, the start of the war in Ukraine, uh, which uh, uh, signed, of course, uh, like a watershed for our continent, uh, but also in rethinking uh, what uh, uh, the policies, uh, uh, neighborhood policies and the destiny of the Western Balkans could be. And there was some hope, you know, that uh, if you want out of fear or out of uh, pure security reasons, the EU would be more ready to uh, to push for a faster integration of the uh, Western Balkans. I would say that uh, one year and a half after that, even this um, uh, hope uh, didn't bring to many, many visible results. And uh, that's a pity, of course. Uh, I think that uh, the Western Balkans are not that high anyway in the European agenda, uh, even if uh, let's remember that, for example, the biggest uh, foreign mission of the EU is still in Kosovo, uh, Eulex. So, I mean, I don't want to be too pessimistic. Uh, there are, you know, there there's a, a will uh, and there's an attention to the region, but at the moment I don't see both to be strong enough to guarantee some realistic uh, step forward uh, for the Western Balkans. And maybe a last comment, if you ask me about uh, how uh, realistic is a uh, inner reform of the European Union, which would bring uh, to uh, uh, better functioning of the European Union itself. It's like, you know, a million dollar question because uh, the Union itself is discussing about that since... Uh, a very long time. I'm not, a, you know, an expert and I'm not fo following that closely the internal uh, issues and internal questions of the European Union. Till now, honestly, as a, an observer, I don't see uh, breakthroughs there too. So, again, you know, I don't want to be too pessimistic, uh, but uh, if it's realistic, if it, it is not realistic, according to me, in the short term. Um, okay, uh, there is maybe another reason to be pessimistic, um, uh, which is not related obligatory directly with the EU will, but um, Western Balkans are full of conflicts. We just saw how in northern Kosovo there was a um, shootout between Kosovo police and some rebels, and uh, there were casualties, and also uh, a number of countries in Western Balkans have either in strong internal problems such as Bosnia or maybe have problems with their neighbors. Uh, I could say maybe Albania with Greece, Northern Macedonia with Bulgaria have a complex relation as well. Uh, so um, uh, where does the dynamics for change and unfreezing of these conflicts could come from? Uh, again, you know, very difficult question to answer since a lot of people are working on that and it seems like uh, the magic uh, element uh, has not been found so i think that uh, we should uh, keep uh, focusing on very um, concrete uh, uh, questions and try to solve them of course uh, uh, well, countries in the western balkans they share some problems but they have also very unique situations so I think that, for example, what is happening in Kosovo uh, cannot be compared to the situation between, for example, Bulgaria and Macedonia. Uh, in Kosovo, we still have a uh, question about uh, the actual status of Kosovo as an independent country. Of course, Kosovo declared its independence in uh, 2008, uh, uh, but Serbia is not accepting that and the destiny, the fate of the northern part of Kosovo is still at stake. What is worrying in that particular case is the return of violence, uh, which could be connected, uh, and I think it is connected also with the situation in Ukraine, uh, where, you know, the, this atmosphere of uh, general insecurity uh, is also... Uh, making things in the region 
more complicated and is is maybe somehow giving strength to the ones who want to solve uh, uh, open issues uh, with violence. Uh, of course, what happened in Kosovo uh, last week uh, was the you know the worst uh, uh, violent accident that happened uh, in, in the country since many years, and it's very worrying because it's. Uh, uh, not very clear what happened, and especially it's not very clear who was supporting this group of people who tried, you know, to, as far as we know, to smuggle weapons and maybe try some bigger action uh, against the Kosovo institutions. Um, so again, you know, I don't think there's a one and unique uh, uh, answer to your question, uh, but I would say that maybe since we're speaking about a very big player like the European Union and smaller players like the individual con- countries in the Western Balkans, I would say that maybe uh, the most effective would be a clear and uh, open-minded, open-hearted policy by the European Union uh, and a clearer perspective for all these countries, which unfortunately the European Un- Union uh, seems... Uh, uh, it's not able to provide. But I think that would be still, you know, a game changer. I think that uh, for people in Western Balkans, uh, uh, there is still no better alternative than to join the European Union. And people, you know, remain faithful to to, to this idea. Uh, the question is that, you know, Mama Europe doesn't seem to be very careful about, you know, uh, Western Balkans. Uh, not, you know, I'm not saying that uh, the full responsibility is only on Brussels, but still, in the, you know, if you take the uh, general overview of the situation, I still think that uh, the most powerful player is the one who should, you know, move the the situation, and that powerful player is still the European Union. As I said, unfortunately, uh, there is no. Uh, uh, unique uh, uh, view and there is no uh, feeling of solidarity I would say uh, when it comes to this particular question very often Western Balkans are used uh, by European diplomacies uh, just as you know uh, uh, bargaining chip uh, this is also true um, you know for countries which which should be very much interested in having the Western Balkans inside the EU like Bulgaria for example which still cannot really, how to say, uh, ex, uh, exhume itself from this kind of games. Uh, I'm, of course, relating this uh, particular situation to the relationships with uh, Northern Macedonia. Um, we see that in Bulgaria and Romania right now, the foreign ministers are, um, in both cases, very close to European institutions. And uh, there is a feeling that Bulgaria and Romania would be playing some role in this renewed push for EU integration of the region, uh, but what exactly could this role be? Um, what is the potential of these two countries to influence positively the developments in Western Balkans? Of course, uh, Bulgaria and Romania uh, have a, a, a say in, in this uh, in this um, in this topic, especially because they are Balkan countries. And so they are the closest and I would say they at least should be the most uh, interested in having the rest of the Balkan scene. Mm, you said that uh, the ministers uh, have you know, experience in the European uh, uh, institutions, which of course is uh, something useful. Here again, uh, on the other side comes um, the, you know, different, uh, the power structure, let's say, of the European Union when... You have on the one side the European institutions that are very pro enlargement, but you have uh, an, an, an unresolved question with uh, individual countries at the moment, and uh, uh, we are you know stuck in a place where the European Parliament, the European Commission are pushing a lot, you know, uh, and it's years, it's been years uh, when these institutions uh, have showed their commitment to, to enlargement. The question is that uh, power, real power in European Union for this question is still in the hands of the uh, singular, you know, single countries. So even one country against it, uh, 
has all the power to to block the process. Let's remember, for example, the shameful, for from my point of view, event of um, North Macedonia, where after uh, uh, agreeing on changing uh, the constitutional name and overcoming uh, the Greek uh, veto, they found themselves, you know, blocked by a French veto, you know, out of nowhere because. Uh, France said that we are not going, uh, you know, have new members uh, till we reform uh, the the internal structure of the union. So I mean, it's pretty confusing, you know. And uh, again, of course, it's important to uh, to be acquainted uh, with uh, the uh, the mechanism of the European institution. But still, you know, you can do much to change the mind of uh, other countries. Uh, and there's here another also element. Uh, where um, again uh, Bulgaria and Romania they you know officially have a very very open uh, position towards the enlargement to the Western Balkans, but they also have uh, uh, bilateral uh, issues uh, which are still open. When it comes to Bulgaria, of course, the biggest one is the one with uh, Northern Macedonia, but also Romania is uh, you know it's. Uh, difficulties to say so for example Romania is one of the EU countries which uh, has not recognized Kosovo as an independent uh, country uh, because of uh, internal reasons because of fear of uh, separatism there are many reasons why but still you know if you want to play a positive role you have to first clean I'd say your own bilateral uh, issues before you know playing uh, b- before being able to play an active role Let's remember that Bulgaria wanted to place itself exactly as a bridge between the EU and the Western Balkans, uh, especially with the meeting uh, in Sofia, the EU Western Balkans meeting in Sofia. Now, I don't remember exactly the year, maybe you can help me. But after that, you know, especially with, uh, with uh, the Northern Macedonia open question, somehow, you know, this position be- became uh, visibly weaker. Yeah, at least according to this year was 2018 and uh, just the next year especially 2020 the politics policy towards northern macedonia changed um of course uh, I, maybe that's a way to introduce my next question uh, there is a sovereignist tendency in both romania and bulgaria in romania is very strong in bulgaria too uh, there is a, a strength in it um to what extent it is likely or possible that uh, there are some surprises in this sense that um, such uh, bilateral issues are um, uh, reopened or uh, such some sabota- sabotation sabotage of um, official EU policies could take place? Honestly, I think it is an, an, an important uh, issue, especially in times of uh, electoral campaigns. That is, uh, I think uh, that the political uh, parties, uh, uh, especially in Bulgaria, because I, I know Bulgaria better than, than Romania, but I think, you know, we can extend this uh, also to Romania. But again, uh, you know, there's this tendency of over underlying the, the issues with uh, uh, North Macedonia for, you know, obtaining uh, political dividends. But I don't think, you know, that Bulgaria, the moment in which, you know, there's uh, some kind of agreement between Bulgaria and Northern Macedonia, I don't think, you know, uh, Bulgarian diplomacy would play, uh, you know, would set uh, enormous obstacles, uh, you know, at the institutional level. So, of course, uh, if uh, the political uh, movements you're speaking about uh, uh, will you know, take power in, in both countries, this is going to be a game changer. Uh, I don't think, it, I don't see this happening uh, that soon. Uh, if, you know, there are no major political earthquakes uh, in both countries. Uh, of course, you know, uh, let's say, let's call it nationalism, the old way, uh, has always played a role in politics in, in both countries. And I would say is playing a big role in European uh, politics, uh, you know, in, in general terms. Again, the question is uh, how uh, how rational is for countries like Bulgaria and Romania 
to be, for example, against the Western Balkans joining in. I think it's uh, uh, clearly unrational and it's not in their interests. But at the same time, uh, having open issues uh, with the neighbors uh, uh, and having strong uh, uh, nationalistic uh, political movements uh, doesn't help that much. Also because, and this may be my last uh, reflection on it, if uh, even the, let's say, mainstream uh, parties I think that uh, they are losing uh, ground on uh, nationalistic uh, themes, they could play in a more nationalistic way, just you know, no, not lose votes and support uh, uh, to uh, uh, you know, more extreme uh, uh, movements. So somehow the, the strength of these parties is moving a bit uh, the whole uh, political specter to, towards uh, uh, nationalism or sovereignism, if you, if you, if you prefer. Okay. Um, we are also aware that we speak about certain region that is kind of peripheral uh, to the European Union. And uh, just a few years ago, we had a rebellion in Western Balkans against the fact that European perspective was not so much clearly articulated. So Serbia, Northern Macedonia and Albania formed the so-called Open Balkans or a mini Schengen uh, area. And I was curious uh, from your uh, travelings, experience, reading and in interviews, what's your appreciation uh, to what extent it's a good idea for these countries, to what extent it brings them closer to the EU or uh, increases their potential? But honestly, you know, I never perceived uh, uh, this initiative uh, as a kind of rebellion against uh, the European Union. I think uh, that it was, uh, yeah, um, you know, a way to show that we are not waiting, you know, uh, forever. Uh, we want to do something even, you know, if you are not letting us in the EU. But somehow, you know, the European Union is encouraging uh, this kind of initiatives very much. Is saying okay, you start, and then you know you you already built uh, some you know experience uh, and expert expertise in managing uh, you know for example open borders. This will mean that uh, when you're gonna be ready to to join in the European Union, uh, will be just faster and easier. Um, so somehow the, the Europe, even you know there was this strange moment when. Uh, some people were afraid of, of open Balkans because uh, they said, okay, if we have open Balkans, then the European Union could say, okay, you already have what you wanted, that is, uh, you know, open borders, so you don't need the EU anymore, something like that. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, in, uh, in theory, mm, it's a pretty positive initiative, but uh, in the, on the ground, on, you know, when turned into reality, had some serious political backlashes. That's because uh, some countries and some political actors uh, uh, in uh, in the region saw it, uh, especially as a as an initiative uh, to put uh, Serbia again at, at the center of the region. Which, of course, uh, uh, there are countries around uh, Serbia itself in the Western Balkans are not too happy about that. Uh, the first and foremost, of course, is Kosovo, which was uh, uh, clearly and openly against uh, the initiative. Uh, while that's, you know, pretty interesting, a uh, um, country like Albania, which, of course, is supporting Kosovo very much on the political level, turned out to be uh, one of the sponsors, you know, of the enthusiastic uh, uh, countries, uh, um, you know, of the idea itself, which at the end of the day, uh, uh, today um, includes uh, only Serbia, uh, North Macedonia and Albania. Uh, of course, uh, you know, also reactions from Bosnia were pretty divided uh, and still and against uh, because of this perceived uh, major role of Serbia uh, in uh, in the initiative, let's remember that Serbia, if compared to the other countries, has also a much bigger uh, production uh, production potential. So somehow 
uh, smaller countries felt a bit threatened by you know the fact that uh, Serbia could take over uh, you know re-establishing sort of a economical Yugoslavia in the heart of uh, the Western Balkans. So um, I think uh, that um, as always, you know, when it comes to some everyday kind of issues like uh, being able to travel only with a ID card and, you know, having a easier uh, crossing of the borders and so on and so forth, uh, I, I think very little people would have something against it. But on the other side, as I mentioned, uh, there's this political issues which uh, you know are still unresolved, and somehow they made this initiative less uh, a, su- a success of what uh, could have been. Okay, uh, you said that um, this initiative, Open Balkans, um, uh, or such type of initiatives, is even promoted by European institutions and is not anti-European, at least <coughs> some people claim. I was curious if we transfer. Uh, our focus on Bulgaria and Romania who are not admitted to the large Schengen area uh, what, to what extent a mini Schengen between Bulgaria and Romania could be evaluated in a similar way as um, something which is maybe uh, having potential to bring the countries closer to the European Union what, what's your appreciation in fact of a Bulgarian Romanian mini Schengen You know, honestly, I don't know if this idea has ever been taken into account seriously by both countries. Uh, maybe you following closely, you know, the relationship between the two of them uh, can say something more to, to, to the listeners about that. Uh, honestly, it's, uh, you know, um, sounds like a very good idea. Also because, you know, would probably enhance uh, communication, travel and, uh, you know, business between the two, two countries. Maybe could also announce, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, better infrastructure between uh, Bulgaria and Romania. Maybe it could, you know, give the start to uh, new bridges on the Danube. I've been hearing about them since a long, long time, uh, but uh, with no, you know, practical realizations. And it could be a way, as you say, to show, you know, okay, we are going to show you that we are ready. The question is, I'm not sure how and how much this would help uh, eventually getting the two countries into the real Schengen. Um, also because, you know, uh, Schengen is not only about uh, uh, traveling without uh, checking so open borders and so on and so forth. It's uh, very much about sharing, uh, you know, sensible uh, information. Um, the countries which are against uh, uh, Bulgaria and Romania joining in, they put a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, they, they underline very much uh, uh, the supposed, uh, you know, uh, problems in managing the borders, the, the external borders of, uh, of uh, the European Union, maybe taking an initiative on themselves uh would uh, be felt like uh, you know uh, playing it and uh, not in an in a team you know with the with the other countries honestly my real hope but the, till now it's a frustrated hope would be for both countries to be admitted uh, directly into the real schengen i even saw that uh, now romania is taking some uh, retaliation Uh, on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on Austria uh, trying to, you know, get closer to NATO, uh, since Austria is, as far as I know, the only country which is openly still, you know, the access of uh, Bulgaria and Romania in the in the Schengen area. According to me, this is one of the most visible examples of uh, uh, serious problems in functioning of the European Union, where one country you know, can decide the fate of millions of uh, EU citizens and really, you know, it becomes the more and more difficult to really understand how this is possible. I think, you know, Bulgaria and Romania staying outside of Schengen so long uh, at this moment uh, is one of the most uh, shameful mistakes uh, uh, that are happening in the internal uh, uh, politics, you know, internal politics of the European Union. That's my personal opinion. 